Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. In case you didn't know, today is Valentine's Day. Some people love celebrating, others think it's just a hallmark holiday, but my next guests, they like it. They like it a lot. It's a shot in the arm during normal times. We're talking about restaurants. And this pandemic has been a rocky and long lasting storm that's tested even the best in the business. They are doing all they can to adapt, keep their customers happy and keep them safe. So this morning we are talking with three Connecticut restaurant owners here as well as a general manager joining us co owner of Max downtown and Trumbull Kitchen in Hartford, Steve Abrams, owner of place to be Gina Luari and Chicago Sam's general manager Ryan Keeley. Thank you so much the three of you for joining me this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I want to start with you Steve. What does Valentine's Day mean to mm -hmm. your restaurant in Hartford? Well, the uh, Valentine's Day is one of the top uh, busiest rest, uh, nights of the year. Uh, New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, uh, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. It's, it's pretty much up there. And of course, this year with uh, the pandemic, it is uh, giving us the, uh, as you say, the shot in the arm, uh, very much so. People are uh, willing to come out. Uh, consumer sentiment is good. and. Um, we are uh, uh, filled up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with Valentine's Day. Uh, tonight, you know, the uh, uh, Friday and Saturday was extremely busy. That's good. So you already have reservations because we have a smaller capacity at this point, right? What's the capacity? Is it 50% at this point? 50% capacity. And uh, tables have to be uh, six feet apart as well. So, you know, most restaurants, uh, we have uh, uh, 10 restaurants. Most of the restaurants, when we... Uh, pulled the tables out and made sure that they were six or eight feet apart in some cases, uh, it got to 50% capacity. So it's kind of about the same. Gina, you were just saying before that you all don't take reservations, but you're expecting it to be very busy. So explain how you're preparing. So we recently launched a Google wait list um, in order to accommodate. We had, a, we had a high volume of phone calls asking for Valentine's Day. And because we don't have reservations and a lot of the people that visit us do travel, um, in order to alleviate the crowd at the door, we have the Google wait list where you can sign up through Google and you will get a text message when your table is ready. Um, so for people that are coming from New Haven to Hartford, I just recommend that before they leave their house, they sign up so that by the time they get here, their table will be ready. Ryan, I want to speak with you because you were just saying before that Super Bowl, I mean, your sports bar, right? Super Bowl was really big and we know that finally the governor had increased the curfew time to 11. That made a difference for you all on Super Bowl Sunday, right? It made a huge, uh, huge difference for us, you know, because the game ended right around 1030 and normally the past Sundays before and even Monday night football, you know, we could only really go to halftime and then unfortunately we'd have to do last call and ask all the guests to they have to leave because of curfew. So the extra hour helped us out immensely. How difficult has this been? Because, you know, restaurants have been hit. Uh, there's been a lot of restrictions. And, you know, in the beginning, especially, there wasn't a lot of help. And we've seen a lot of businesses go under because of this. Steve, what did you guys have to do to keep the doors open and uh, survive? I know Trumbull Kitchen is closed temporarily right now, which I'm sad about because I would do the takeout, the, um, mushroom and chicken pasta at work all the time. I crave it. So I'm looking forward to the spring when you said it's going to be back open. But how did you manage this? We uh, managed by uh, pivoting. You know, we uh, did what what all, all these good restaurateurs are doing. Um, you pivot to takeout. You pivot to uh, uh, Max Downtown was closed in the summertime. And uh, we pivoted to uh, outdoor dining at uh, a farm in Simsbury. We did uh, farm dinners. I took my staff that I still had, and uh, we went out to the farm and uh, we did farm dinners. We did 14 of them, uh, everyone was sold out. And then uh, it came time, I felt uh, it was important to get Max Downtown to open in the, for the fall. We opened, during that time, Trumbull Kitchen had been open because they had an outdoor patio. And uh, as everybody knows, uh, outdoor patio business was the place to be this summer. And uh, our landlord at Trumbull Kitchen uh, allowed us to, uh, quadruple the size of our patio. We took the length of the uh, entire building and uh, that's where the business was. When Max Downtown opened in September, uh, we were at Max Trouble Kitchen uh, was uh, still busy with their outdoor patio. And then as it got colder, 
Jen, it was uh, tough for both of us to have enough business to survive because there's just no one downtown. Anyone who knows downtown, is the buildings are empty. Uh, there's no business to business dining and um, there's no uh, theater and there's no sporting events. So it's very difficult. Trumbull Kitchen, uh, once it got cold, uh, decided to uh, close up for the for the winter time and uh, reopen in the spring and let Max downtown have most of that business again not splitting it and uh, once it gets uh, nice enough to put tables outside Trumbull Kitchen will be open we expect uh, probably April 15th to uh, start uh, Trumbull Kitchen again so people can be done with their taxes and they can go get a martini on the patio noted okay absolutely uh, we, we call it there's a, there's a new okay. word in, in restaurants we call it hi hibernation they're hibernating for the for the winter they are and they'll be uh, good to go the spring there you go all right gina you were you were launching this other location in the middle of a pandemic uh nice. right because place to be which you know is the hip and cool spot downtown right now uh you launched in the fall is what i was reading yeah so we launched in october and in a very 2020 moment two weeks after uh, our pipes burst and so we had to shut down <laughs> oh my goodness and so um, then we reopened in December, which we were a little nervous of because we did have a large patio and that was the majority of um, where people wanted to sit when we opened in October. And with the cold weather, we were just nervous that we weren't going to be able to stay in that patio crowd. Um, and we kind of combated that with getting a lot of heaters, uh, fire pits and anything to make it comfortable outside. For Valentine's Day especially, um, I got red blankets that I'm just going to be giving out to everyone um, just to make it a little cozier and, and a little more enjoyable because there are still people that would prefer to dine outside. Um, so we're, we're definitely trying to navigate through that. And the biggest part of it was building out our space at a 50% capacity. Um, you know, in, in the process prior to opening, we had to have all of these new restrictions that had to be thought about in the construction process that you wouldn't normally have to do when building out a restaurant. Um, that is also with, we are opening in West Hartford in about a month, and it is probably the most challenging thing to think about, how am I going to make this 50% capacity? How am I going to work the dividers into the design? How how am I going to guess in, get guests in and out of here, the different exits, the one ways, like those are so many different factors that you just wouldn't have to navigate before and opening a restaurant so it's definitely an experience it's yeah. uh you can't yeah. make this stuff up and it's learning as you go that's for sure ryan i know that chicago sam's has painstakingly gone through uh you know the interior to make sure that guests feel safe tell us about some of the precautions you're pr putting in uh, at the restaurant to make people feel safe to come out and enjoy so with the stage, we bubbled in the whole stage. So anybody who can perform, unfortunately, they're not allowed to sing, but we do like a lot of acoustic stuff up there. And then the whole bar is all plexiglassed in. There's uh, plexiglass between all the booths. And then we made these six foot plexi dividers. So if a couple comes in and they wanna sit at the bar, we can sit them at the bar and then we'll just move the divider in between them and any stranger. So we've, we've taken a lot of precautions with that. We've been working with the Restaurant Association with this, uh, with this Dine Safe app, which kind of makes all my managers responsible for all the checklists for a lot of the COVID stuff. So that goes out every day and they have to answer the questions and comply with everything. And, you know, the outside, we got an outside patio that we're, we're gonna wait to uh, you know, set up once the snow melts and it gets a little warmer out. But we're a little lucky because we can fit 210 people in here at 50%. Mm. So we we kind of lucked out with, with that aspect of it, but it's basically just like everybody else, you're going day to day, trying to make sure you're following every guideline and making sure all your customers are safe. Steve, how do you think the state has handled the restaurant industry. I mean, there's been a lot of criticism about it. I know that there's a lot of owners out there who are upset with how uh, the state has put a lot of restrictions on restaurants. How's it been from your point of view? You know, I'm afraid I don't agree with those restaurateurs who think the state's not doing a good job. I think that uh, the governor has done a fabulous job with this. You know, our, our numbers are very low. Uh, he's taken the, uh, the slow road. Uh, customers are starting to get uh, confidence in going out and um, uh, 
uh, I am uh, I'm a believer in him. He's he knows uh, when to move the uh, the goalposts. He allowed us open to uh, 11 o'clock. I believe he's going to uh, allow uh, the catering events to start booking parties for the spring and the summer. That's the next move. And I know that the uh, catering people uh, who have and, and I'm one of them. We do have a catering company, and uh, and certainly that's that's a tough call right now. Pe people are not willing to book, not knowing what the uh, capacity is going to be outside. So that's something that uh, is a little slow to go, but I think he's being very, very cautious. And the 50%, uh, uh, a lot of the restaurants are, are large and uh, have, with uh, barriers, have uh, been able to maintain their business. And uh, the patios that, uh, that the governor has uh, allowed uh, uh, or uh, eased up on uh, getting the zoning for uh, has been very good to the restaurants. All right, so, so of course, it is, it is tough. It is tough, but uh, you got to play by the rules. We only have about a minute left, but I want to give e each of you a chance. If someone hasn't heard of your restaurant, they're watching this segment, why should they come out and enjoy? Uh, maybe you might be booked tonight, but why should they come out and check out your restaurant? Uh, Gina, tell us why people should check out Place to Be. Um, we are very accessible. We're uh, brunch all day, every day, seven days a week. We have bottomless mimosas. Um, we have amazingly fun Instagrammable drinks, and mm -hmm. we are, <laughs> and we are trying to be a, um, a more accommodating brand with the 90-minute uh, turnover time to try to get everybody a chance to come in and out of our space and have the online wait list. So you know, I hope everyone can make it down to South End or downtown Hartford to come check us out. Ryan, tell us why people should come to the Chicago Sam's. We have every game you could possibly watch, uh, wide open space, DJs, acoustic. Uh, it's, a, it's a great place to come and hang out with your friends after you go to dinner, during dinner. Um, and we, we're just as much of a party as we possibly can be in these, in these tough times. <laughs> Steve? Uh, Max Downtown is uh, voted one of the best restaurants in, in uh, Connecticut. My staff is truly caring to make sure that you have a great time and they're gonna make you feel as if they're working for you, not for the house. Hospitality is the number one game. Come downtown, it's safe. All right, Steve, Ryan, Gina, thank you so much for joining me for this segment today. Appreciate it and keep us updated on how things are going. We'll have you back on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 News app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.